फ्रेंड्स आय मिसेस पुष्पलता राहुल शिंदे फैकल्टी ऑफ इंग्लिश फ्रॉम आर्यन कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट्स कॉमर्स एंड सायंस कैम्प पुणे टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑन द समरी ऑफ द कॉप एंड द एंथम व्हिच इज रिटन बाय ओ हेनरी इन आवर लास्ट व्हिडिओ वी हॅव डिस्कस अबाउट द लाईफ स्टाईल ऑफ द ऑथर ओ हेनरी the link and path of that video i have given on the screen so now we'll see what is the exact story of the cop and the anthem so sophie is the protagonist of the anthem and he the story is revolved around his life so one day on his bench in madison square sophie moved uneasily when wild geese honk high of nights and when women without skills in courts grow kind to their husbands and when sopi moves uneasily on his bench in the park you may know that the winter is near at hand a dead leaf fell in sopi's lap that was jack frost card jack is kind to the regular nights of madison square and gives fair warming of his annual call at the com at the commerce of four streets his hands his passed a boat to the north wind footman of the mansion and all outdoors so that the inhabitants thereof may make ready so his mind became consistent of the fact that the time had come for him to resolve himself into a singular committee of ways and means to provide against the common rigor and therefore he moved uneasily on his bench the heber maternal ambitions of sophie were not of highest in them there were no considerations of mediterranean cruise or sopori southern sky is drifting in the vesian bay three months on the island was what his soul craved three months of assured board and bed and congenial company safe from boris and blue coat seemed to sophie the essence of things desirable so now we'll see what are his desires and what he want For years the hospitable Blackwell had been his winter quarters just as he more fortunate fellow year yorkers had bought their tickets to Palm Beach and the Riviera each winter so Sophy had made his humble arrangement for his annual hajira to the island and now the time was come on the previous night three Sabbath newspapers distributed beneath his coat about his ankles and over his lap had failed to repulse the cold as he slept on his bench near the splashing fountain in the ancient square so the island loomed big and timely in sophie's mind he scorned the provisions made in the name of charity for the city's dependents in sophie's opinion the law was more begin than philanthropy there was an endless round of institution municipal and elementary on which he might set out and receive lodging and food accordant with a simple life but to one of sophie's proud spirit the gift of charity are impure if not in coin you must pay in humiliation of spirit of every benefit received at the hands of philanthropy as caesar had his brutus every bed of charity must have its stall of the past every loaf of bread its compensation of a private and personal inquisition wherefore it is better to be a guest of the law which though conducted by rules does not meddle unduly with a gentleman private affairs So be having decided to go to the island at once set about accompanying his desire there were many easy ways of doing this the pleasantness was to dine luxuriously at some expensive restaurant and then after declaring in sorcery 
he handed over quietly and without a prover to a policeman and uncommodating magistrate with wood to the rest sophie left his bench and strolled out to the square and across the level sea of the sp- a spot where board way and fifth avenue flow together up broadway he turned and hatled at a glittering cafe where are gathered together night of choices products of the grape the silkworm and the protoplasma sophie has confidence in himself from the lowest button of his vest upward he was shaven and his coat was decent and was neat black ready tied four in hand had been presented to him by a lady missionary on a thanksgiving day if he could reach a table in the restaurant up suspected in a waiter's mind a roasted mallard duck though sophie would be at about the thing with a bottle of chablis and then cambard a demi tasse and a cigar 1 dollar of a cigar would be enough the total would not be so high as to call forth and supreme manifestation of revenge from the care management and yet the meal and would leave him feel a happy for the journey to the, his winter refuge but as sophie set foot inside the restaurant door the head waiter's eye fell upon his fried trousers and decayed and shoes strong and ready hands turned him about and conveyed him in silence and haste to the sidewalk and overtake to the ignoble fat and menaced mallard so peter now broadway it seemed that his route to the covered island was not to be an equipier one some other way of entering limbo must be thought of at the corner of 6 avenue electric lights and cunningly displayed wares behind plate glass made a shop window conscious press so pe took a cobblestone and dashed it through the glass people came running and around the corner policemen in the lead so pe stood still with his hands in his pocket and smile at the sigh of brass buttons where the man that done that inquired the office excitedly Trying to figure out that I might have that had something to do with it," said Sophie, not without sarcasm, but friendly as one great good fortune. The policeman might refuse to accept Sophie's even as a clue. Men who smash windows do not remain to parley with the law's minions that take to their heels. The policeman saw a man. half way down the block running to catch a car with drawn club he joined in the pursuit soapy with disgust in his heart loafed along twice unsuccessful on the opposite side of the street was a restaurant of no great pretensions it catered to large appetites and modest purses it its crockery and atmosphere were thick its soup and napery thin into his place so he took his acquisitive shoe and a tall trousers without challenge at a table he sat and consumed big fries flapjacks donuts and pie and then to a waiter he betrayed the fact that the minutes coin and himself were strange now get busy and call a cop said soapy and don't keep a gentleman waiting No cop for you, yes," said the waiter, with a voice like butter cakes and eye like a cherry in a manthan cocktail. Hey, call! Neatly upon his left ear, on the callous pavement, two waiters pitched soapy. He arose, joint by joint, as the carpenter's rule opens, and beat the dust from his clothes. Arrays seemed but a rosy dream. the island seemed very far away a policeman who stood before a drug store two doors away laughed and walked down the street five blocks so fit travel before his courage permitted to a uh, who capture again this time the opportunity presented what he 
virtuously team up to himself a king a young woman of a modest and pleasing guise was standing before a show window gazing is sprightly interest at her little display of shaving mugs and inkstands and two yards from the window a large policeman of severed demeanor leaned against a water plug it was a soapy design to assume the role of the despicable and exacted masher the refined and elegant appearance of his victim and the continuity of the consciousness cop encouraged him to believe that he would soon feel the pleasant official clutch upon his arm that would ensure his winter quarters on the right lady tight lady else so he straightened the lady missionary's ready made tie tucked his shrinking cuffs into the open set his hat at a killing cant and sidled toward the young woman he made eyes at her was taken with sudden cuffs and hums smiles maker and went brazily through the impudent and contemptible litany of the mashup with half an eye soapy saw that the policeman who was watching him fixedly the young woman moved away a few steps and again based on her absorbed attention upon the shaving mugs soapy followed Boldly stepping to her side, raised his hat and said, "Ah, there, Bedell, don't you want to come and play in my yard?" The policeman was still looking. The persecuted young woman had but to beck on a finger, and so he would be practically and wrote for his insular heaven. Already he imagined he could feel the cozy warmth of the station house. The young woman faced him and, stretching out a hand, caught Sophie's coat sleeve. "Show sure, my," she said joyfully. "If you will be blow me to a pair of shirts, I would have spoke to you sooner, but the cop was watching." With the young woman playing the clinging ivy to his oak, Sophie walked past the policeman, overcome with gloom. He seemed doomed to liberty. At the next corner, he shook off his companion and ran. He hated in his district where by night are found the highest streets, hearts, woes, and libertos. Women in furs and men in great coats moved gaily in a wintry way. A sudden fear seized Sophie, and that some dreadful enchantment had rendered him immune to arrest. The thought brought a little of panic upon it, and when he came upon another policeman lounging gratefully in front of the transplanted theater, he caught at an immediate straw or disorderly conduct. On the side of Sophie began to yell drunken, glabish at the top of his harsh voice. He danced, howled, howled loudly, and otherwise disturbed the way. The policeman twisted his club, turned his back, and so he remarked to the citizen. Did one of them yell his celebrant? The goose egg they give him to the Hatford College, noisy, but no harm will instruction to leave them be. Disconsolate, so he sees his unwilling racket. Would never a policeman lay hands on him? In his fancy, the island seemed an unattainable Arcadia. He buttoned his thin coat against the chilling wind. In a cigar store, he saw a well-dressed man lighting a cigar at a swinging light. His silk umbrella he had set by the door on entering. Sophie stepped inside, secured the umbrella, and sauntered off with it slowly. The man at the cigar light followed hastily. "My umbrella," he said sternly. Oh, is it? Sneered Sophie, adding insult to petty clemency. Well, why don't you call a policeman to get your umbrella? Why do you, don't you call a cop? There stand one on the corner. The umbrella owner slowed his steps. Sophie did likewise with the pres presentiment, and luck would again run against him. The policeman looked at the two curiously. Of course," said the umbrella man. "That is well. You know how this mistake occur. I, if it's your umbrella, I hope you will excuse me. I picked it up 
this morning in a restaurant if you recognize it as yours why i hope you will of course it's mine said so peevishes the ex umbrella man retreated the policeman hurried to assist a tall blind in an opera clock across the street in front of a street car that was approaching two blocks away so pe walked eastward through a street damaged by improvement he hurled the umbrella wrathfully into an exhibition he may He muttered against the men who wear helmets and carry clubs because he wanted to fall into their clutches. They seemed to regard him as a king who could do no wrong. At a lane so rich, one of the avenues to the east where the glitter and turmoil was to paint, he set his face down and toured Madison's care for the homing and instinct survives even the home is in the bench. but on the unusually quiet corner sopi came to a sand still here was an old church quaint and rambling a gabel through the violent stained window a soft light glowed where no doubt the organist loitered over the keys making sure the mastery of the coming sabbath anthem for they had drifted out the sopi's yes sweet music and caught and held and transmuted against the convolutions of the iron flesh the moon was above lestrates and the siren vehicles and pedestrians were few sparrows twittered sleepily in the eaves for a little while the scene might have been a country churchyard and the anthem that the organist played cemented so pe to the iron fence for he had no it well in the days when his life contained such things as mother roses and ambitions and friends and immaculate thoughts and colors the conjunctions of sophie's receptive slight a mind of mine and the influence about the old church brought a sudden and wonderful change in his soul he viewed and swept horror the pit into which he had tumbled he degraded days unworthy desires dead hopes wrecked fac- faculties and base motive that made he made up his existence and also a moment his heart responded thrillingly to his novel mood and instigious and strong impulse moved him to battle with his desperate fate he would pull himself out of the mire he would make a man of himself he would conquer the evil that had taken possession of him there was time he was comparatively young yet it would reset his older eager ambitions and pursue him without facing those solemn but sweet organ notes had set up a revolution in him tomorrow he would go into a roaring downtown district and find work a far important had once offered him a place as a driver he would find him tomorrow and ask for the position he would be somebody in the world he would so be felt a hand laid on his arm see friends he looked quite quickly around into the bored face of a policeman what are you doing here asked the officer nothing said sophie then come along said the policeman and then he took him to the court and the magistrate has declared one thing what are the thing three months on the island said the magistrate in the police court the next morning so friend this is our life whatever we are thinking will not happen but when we stop ourselves maybe that thing will happen that is depend on our destiny so we have to try for something good so i hope you like this story you listen it carefully and will try to solve the exercise given below thank you very much